Are you struggling to learn how to create renderings with Blender? Hi guys, I'm Alex, lead instructor at Blender Academy, the place where professionals go when they're serious about learning Blender. We've developed our easy to follow method to help you create high quality renderings fast in our complete intro to rendering in Blender course. And for a limited time, we're making the entire first unit of our course available for free here on YouTube. So be sure to open up Blender and follow along to create your very first rendering. And at any time, if you'd like to dive even deeper into our Blender courses, head over to blenderacademy.com to continue learning with us. Thanks for watching, and here's the first lesson. Now, every time that you launch Blender or open a new file in Blender, you'll be greeted with a default cube here. If you click and hold down on your center mouse wheel, you'll orbit around that cube in 3D space. And just to note, you'll start off in the layout workspace. You notice that by the layout tab up here. And as you're working in this workspace and you're orbiting around in 3D, you'll see this three dimensional environment. And again, the default 3D cube. Now, when we talk about creating a rendering, we're talking about creating a 2D image of this 3D space. So you orbit around and when you stop, in a way, what you see here on a screen is a rendering. It's a two dimensional image on your computer screen that's representing what it sees in 3D space. Now, that being said, though, when we talk about rendering, we're generally talking about producing a final rendering that looks either stylistic or realistic. And the way we do that in Blender is, and you can go ahead and follow along with me, go up to your top menu and pick the option for render and then pick render image. And you'll notice that a rendering of what you see there in your 3D space pops up. Now, if you notice, if I click and move this down and around, you notice that the angle of view on this cube versus the cube in my 3D space is different. And you'll also notice that the lighting is different. So this looks fairly flat gray, whereas this has one side that's a little brighter, one side that's quite dark, and another one that's somewhere in between. Now, if we were gonna to go to the trouble to actually save this image so we could open it later, you would go up to the image menu here and then pick the option for save. Now, right now we don't need to save this, just pointing out that's how we would finish out rendering this scene. So you can go ahead and click cancel for now. And then go ahead and close down the Blender render window. Now, we had seen how the angle and the lighting differed. Let's go up here to the top right area of this layout workspace, and you'll see that you have a collection and you have different objects here. Now, we know that we have the default cube, but we also see that there's a camera and there's a light. And if you go back to your three-dimensional area here, roll your mouse wheel so that you zoom back a bit, you'll notice that the camera is this object here. You can click once to select it, and you'll notice that the default light is this object here. So it turns out that the rendering requires a camera, which you will virtually look through at an object, and then it needs some sort of lighting so that it knows how to render the different surfaces of that object. And we'll get into more about what the camera does, what the lighting does, and how to make it all work together in an upcoming set of lessons. But for right now, just pointing out that the different angle of view we saw was because it doesn't matter what angle of view you have here in the three-dimensional space. It only matters what the camera is looking at. And then same thing with the lighting. It doesn't matter what the lighting looks like to you here as you're orbiting around. It matters what kind of lighting is set up and how that will be cast into your scene. Now that all being said, the rendering we just created was pretty underwhelming. And what we're about to talk about in the upcoming set of lessons is how to use a simple strategy called the photographer method to create much nicer looking renderings. Now the photographer method consists of two things. The first is thinking about rendering as if you're a professional photographer. And I'll get into more about what I mean by that in an upcoming lesson. And then the second thing is following a six step checklist for every rendering you do. Now the checklist consists of these six steps. The first is having a render ready model. And again, we'll talk about this in a future lesson. The second is setting up your camera. The third is setting up your lighting. The fourth is setting up your materials, which as we'll talk about is really just an extension of the lighting since materials absorb and reflect light to show what they look like, whether it's a color or some sort of pattern. 
The fifth is to set up your final render settings. This is the equivalent to taking the final image if you're a professional photographer. And then the sixth and final step is post-production. So much like a photographer would take that final image and maybe use a program like Photoshop to enhance it, we'll talk about how you can enhance that final rendering right here in Blender. Now we're gonna cover each of these six steps in its own video lesson, and we'll do that to create our first simple rendering. And then of course, we'll dive even deeper into each of these steps in a separate set of lessons. But for right now, we understand what rendering is and what we mean when we talk about rendering. So we're ready to jump into the next lesson where we'll talk about creating a render ready model in Blender. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending.